All right, guys, welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind show, where we help everyday people uh, build wealth through real estate investing. I'm your host today, Glenn Schwarm, my beautiful wife, Amber. <laughs> Hello, everybody. That was a tongue twister there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. Something wrong with me. I don't know. But it is what it is. But listen, we have a great guest today. So for those of you guys who are you know, newer to investing or mid-level investors, if you've never uh, used a self-directed IRA uh, for your investing business, you are missing the boat. Um, Amber and I, uh, we're going to introduce our guest here in just a minute, but I want to give you some, some background. Amber and I, when we started 13 years ago, was the, you know, as, as the story goes, the market was ripped out from underneath us with funding because the banks all shut down back in 2007 and all lending went away. And we had to figure out how to do this. And if you've heard our story at all, you know that the we banks had- banks didn't exactly shut down. They shut that, our, might, that might confuse people. They shut our programs down. So to me, they were shut down. So it didn't mean anything. So yeah, good point. People are like, what? Yeah, the yeah. bank shut down? The bank shut down. That's what it felt like. That's what it felt like, right? We had deals under contract and they just disappeared. But we had to find the funding for them. So we went to a, a private lender model. And then you guys who know us know that we preach the private lender model. We raised about $5 million in private lender funds. But what I realized was about, I think around $2 million of that, maybe two and a half million now is cash. The other two and a half million is in what's called a self-directed IRA. And so they are able to invest their retirement money and get paid, you know, get their, their returns um, uh, tax protected, depending on, you know, how you started this. But our guest today is going to talk to you about that in great detail. And if you're not using this as part of your strategy, you need to. So uh, Jason DeBono uh, from New View, uh, New View Trust, right? Out of Florida. Is that what you guys are out of? Yep. We're, uh, we've are we got a trust office and a compliance office in South Dakota. And then our operational uh, processing team is here in Florida. Awesome. Well, welcome welcome to our podcast today. I'm, we're thrilled to have you and want to talk more about this. I was just telling you before we start, I love the picture on the back wall of my son, my son whose name is Dakota. Uh, he, uh, he and I... Every year, or we try every year, get down to Florida and do a little fishing. We pull up those uh, those dolphin. They're uh, they're good fish to catch. I, Dol- like, I like to eat them. Dolphin being a mahi mahi. For those people who are listening and not watching, there's a picture on the wall of a mahi mahi. So when I say dolphin, don't think I'm out there fishing we're, for dolphin. We're not eating bottlenose. That's true. That's right. Yeah, flipper. Um, very confusing. <laughs> so Jason, tell us about you. Uh, well, I I started in this business uh, a little over 15 years ago, and and kind of right in in, uh, in the middle of 2005. So. You know, we've seen a lot of different markets uh, and cycles. And the one thing that's been constant is self-directed IRAs continue to provide a way for people to take advantage of whatever the market conditions are. Uh, and, you know, obviously 2007, 8, 9, 10, uh, private lending was was such a big strategy because it was the only way deals were getting done. Uh, and then in 2011, 12, 13, we saw a lot of our clients buying real estate with cash because they're IRA was positioned to do that. So they were able to go take advantage of the market. Uh, And we've seen every other type of deal um, that you could possibly imagine in in market cycles and conditions from short sale negotiations uh, all the way up to uh, REO REO properties along the way. Uh, And now we're seeing a lot of syndications and multifamily uh, and then even a lot of repurposing a property, which is really cool and and properties being used in different ways and more functional tiny homes and uh, some of those things. So it's a fun perspective to see the investing community. And uh, I continue to be amazed by what our clients do with their accounts and their creativity and understanding of how to make money in really all different situations. We've been in the business for a long time. And you and I and Amber, we could all talk this language. It sort of flows off our tongue. But I think people that are brand new, some people might be saying, what's an what's a self-directed IRA? Like we we're, we all, it's just second, it's just common nature to us, right? But Maybe take them back with a very elementary ex- explanation of what a self-directed, because people are like, what do you mean? I can direct my own money? What are you talking about? So maybe take them back to some basics. Yeah, and, and I appreciate you reminding me of that. It's easy to let jargon get in the way. And and, uh, and after 15 years, we should know this stuff, right? Um, but a self-directed IRA is, is, let's start, it's really two things, right? The first is, it's simply an IRA or retirement account. So the first decision that you make is if you want to save in a tax advantage way through a retirement account, you got to pick one or pick two and put your money into it. The second thing that you do is once you have that money and whether it be a 401k or IRA is what do you invest it into? And that's really where a self-directed IRA uh, you know, comes to life is are a self-directed IRA is where someone uses the retirement funds to buy something that's not publicly traded. So if you kind of think about it, most people save through 401ks and IRAs through their employers. They work somewhere 10, 12 years, and they go to Schwab or Fidelity or Merrill Lynch, and they put that money in the stock market. 
What NewView does is exact uh, same thing that Schwab and Fidelity does from a standpoint of holding the IRA, right? The rules and regulations of IRAs are all the same. But what's different in a self-directed account is you don't have to buy just stock bonds and mutual funds. So people come to us when they want to buy something unique or not publicly traded. Uh, and that would be most commonly real estate. Uh, private notes, is, as Glenn kind of alluded to, is, is, is his foray into self-direction, uh, as well as private equity. Um, so any kind of private enterprise or business can also be held in an IRA. Um, the one thing that I've always told people when I'm, when I'm you know, talking to a potential new private lender, and some people say, well, I don't have the money to invest with you. And the next question is, well, do you have an IRA? And if they have the IRA, then you say, and they say, well, you can't touch that. I'm like, no, I can't. But you, we can talk about putting it into a self-directed IRA. Do you help people with that transition? So I've got fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars in an IRA. Uh, it can't be a four hundred one k, right? It's or if it is, you can't work there anymore. Or there's a there's a lot of a lot of stipulation. The one thing I want to say before I, your answer is that the one thing I love about a company like you, that everyone should know, you keep us compliant. Right, you keep us compliant with you. You are the you are the guard between a regular person and the IRS. Right, you make sure the eyes are dotted and t's are crossed, so nothing bad can happen to your money and get penalized. Correct? Yeah, there's a nuance to that, which is we we will help you with what bit of the relationship we control and and have a part of. Um, it is self directed. Where we, you are driving the car, and you can speed and you can crash. Right, make sure. no mistake. We are not sitting next to you the whole time. But, it, but the periods of time we're sitting next to you, um, yeah, we're here to, we're like the, the student driver, right? We've got our own little break on the side and we want to help you. But um, there is some personal Let responsibility. Me clarify. Let me clarify if I could with you. I want to clarify. I meant keep you compliant, not keep you profitable. Because you're still investing your own money, right? You gotta, you gotta make your decisions for the investment. You don't handle that part. But you're making sure legally that that all the paperwork is done right and. That's the part you're really. That's of, the part of, you really help with. The actual with. investment part, not not necessarily the real estate contracts. Correct. Yeah, so so both, right? We we do not. No custodian has any legal responsibility, right? That's the self and self direction. We also are not responsible for you following the rules. We are guardians of the rules. We work closely with our customers. We'll answer any questions that you have. Um, but if you break the rules, it again, it's kind of like we'll tell you what the speed limit is. We'll tell you how to drive the speed limit. Um, but at the end of the day, when you get in the car and hit the gas, if you don't pay attention to the speed limit, you are taking your own risk into your own hands. Got it. Um, great, great good analogy. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Great point. Because if you take money out where you shouldn't, or you put it in the wrong pocket, or you put it in your own pocket, you, that's when you get in trouble. But you're right. You don't have any say over that. If they do it, they're in trouble. So yeah. So continue on. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. No, you're good. And I'm going to go back to the first question you, you had asked um, about 401ks. And I appreciate you bringing that up because retirement accounts as a whole encompass 401ks and IRAs. And those terms are used interchangeably, but ultimately they are different types of accounts, but they're, they're similar in nature because they're both retirement based and tax advantaged. If you're if you have a 401k at your current employer, chances are what we're talking about is not eligible for those dollars. And the reason is, uh, if you work at AT and T, for example, while you're an active employee, AT AT and T controls what that account does, not you. Once you no longer work there, and you can roll that money to an IRA, an IRA you control completely, and you can make that investment decision for real estate or whatever it may be. So. Um, that's just a, something that you have to be aware of. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, so old 401ks, any type of IRA, that stuff's all portable and fully available. Uh, current 401k plans, for the most part, are probably not going to allow you uh, to access real estate as an investment. Yeah. But when you, but when you have that money, uh, let, let the folks know what... So again, you can invest in... Like what we have done is our investors roll their, IR, their IRAs into a, into a self-directed IRA. And then essentially the self-directed IRA becomes the lender, not that person, right? Is that's kind of how that works, right? Yep. So I, want to, I want to clarify something here too, because this is real estate. We're talking about real estate investing. So, but when you say our investors, those are our private uh, money lenders. Those are our private money investors, not real point. estate investors. That's why I marry her. She keeps me compliant. <laughs> I can drive the car well, as fast I'm, as I want, you know, but I'm, I'm, she keeps me I'm compliant. Keeping, I'm putting myself in the, in the Listener. listener's viewpoint and that could be really confusing, I think. Yeah. Good point. Well, yeah, the people know, that provide us money. So the world of, and this is the beauty of self-directed IRAs, there's lots of ways that they can incorporate into your real estate investing approach and business. So um, what there's really two ways to put an IRA to work. One is 
if you have an IRA and you want to go out and buy something outside the stock market, right? You want to buy a piece of property, for example. Um, that's one way, right? Your IRA making your own investments and any return goes back to your IRA and you hopefully grow the account exponentially and never pay tax on it, right? That's the gig. The other way that real estate investors take advantage of self-directed IRAs is kind of the way that Glenn and Amber have alluded to, which is you don't have to use your own IRA. So you can help other people unlock their IRA for the sake of your own real estate investment benefit and for theirs too. And I can speak so closely to this because in 2009, 10, 11, and 12, when I was just starting to accumulate enough money in my retirement account, right? I was, I did private lending and I still do some private lending, but I've been private lending for almost 12 years now out of my retirement account. So while I'm a real estate investor as well, and while I own, you know, buy and sell real estate, I actually use my own retirement money to lend to people like Glenn and Amber so that they can go use it for their deals. Because for me, it's easier to be passive, i.e. on the lending side of those deals, so that my IRA has a fixed rate of return, right? 8%, 10%, 12%, depending on who you're loaning the money to and against what property. And then I go out and use my own money to buy real estate. And then I'll borrow money from other IRAs to buy real estate. Because all I'm really interested in for my IRA is generating better return than I think the stock market can in what I believe, and I'm not saying this universally, but what I believe to be in a safer manner, right? I have a private loan on a property that's got 70% loan to value, right? With someone that has a vested interest in the success of that property. And I've got a first lien on the property itself. So not to say I can't lose money and not to say my borrower couldn't stop paying, but at the end of the day, I've got lots of check boxes to recover my money before I'm out. Whereas in the stock market, it's great when things go up, but it's really bad when things go down. There's no protection that I have. And that's why I choose to use my retirement money to be a lender. Um, and what I love about it is because I'm a real estate investor by trade as well, when Glenn you know, says he needs to borrow money and, and wants to do a deal, I can look at the deal and say, is Glenn going to make money on this? Yeah. And if he is, then the likelihood of getting paid for me is significantly higher. And if, if he gives me a deal that doesn't look very good, the beauty is I don't have to write the loan. Yeah. Right. So in, in really simple terms, like if, if there's a brand new investor that doesn't really have any money of their own, but they have a friend or a family member or somebody that they knows that has a retirement account that they can switch over to a self-directed IRA, the benefit to that person that's using their self-directed IRA is that they can probably, um, in all likelihood, make more on their money than they would if they put their money in the stock market, you know, percentage wise. So that's, that's the benefit and be, to the lender. And, be, yeah, and, 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 like and have said, a, be safer too. Yeah, exactly. You can see and touch that. It's a, you know, <clears> obviously if so, so you're just, I'm glad to know you're, you're a real estate investor just like us. We understand the, hey, that's my house. I have a piece of that, right? I can touch it, it's feel tangible. it. That's, it's tangible. So the stock market, you're staring at numbers and digits on a screen. You're just hoping for the best, you know? So yeah, that's, that's great. I love what you said about the term unlock. I don't think I've ever used that term before, but I'm going to use that term going, I'm going to steal that from you. You well, want be careful. We do have a trademark. <laughs> <laughs> An unlock. That's great. So, so, you know, but if you can, if you can, un, you know, so tell me they can unlock their money because their money's tied up. Most people don't realize they can do other things with that, with an IRA. Do you find that to be the case? Well, and it, it not as bad as it was when I started. So when I started 15 years ago, I mean, I remember talking to people and saying, did you know you could buy real estate in an IRA? And I mean, it was like one out of a hundred that was like, kind of, Right. Now it's probably 20 out of 100 that, that kind of know it. So it's, and it's not a tool for everybody. There's a lot of people that don't, they won't put in the time and energy. And it's not a bad thing, but it does take a lot of time and energy to understand how to invest in real estate. Just like it takes a lot of time and energy to really understand how to invest in stocks. It's why most people's retirement money simply owns mutual funds because it's it's a group of stocks and you don't really have to pick anything and you just kind of hold it and when the market's great, you feel like you're a really smart investor. When the market goes down, you don't know why it's going down. And that's why I choose not to put my money there. I mean, you don't have to look any further than the middle of a pandemic and the stock market is at all time highs, yet walk down the street in whatever city or town you live in and you don't have to look very far to go, something's not right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yet the market's at all time highs, it's disjoined from reality. And I don't like to invest in something that I have no level of understanding of uh, and people that say they know the market, God bless them. They've put in a lot more energy and time than I have. Um, but I can look at a piece of real estate and know that for $200,000, it can rent for 1800 bucks a month. If it rents for 10 out of 12 months and my expenses are average, you know, I can make 6%. 
And yeah. if it appreciates at three to 5% a year, if I hold it for five years, a couple good years, a couple bad years, I can, this can be a winner for me, right? Um, I can't do that in any stock bond or mutual fund. Yeah, we've noticed just personality wise too, to that point, some people like the volatility. They like the roller, the emotional roller coaster ride that the stock market takes. You know, it kind of like gets their blood yeah. pumping. But then we always say, you know, it's re, investing in real estate this way isn't isn't sexy. Like it's it's yep. it's it's consistent. It's it doesn't give you that emotional roller coaster. And some people like that emotional roller coaster. Although I think the other is a lot safer with your money. Yeah, you're. I'm thinking about when when you know there's other ways people can use their money, right? So we, we're talking about private lenders using an, a self-directed IRA to invest in in our business or someone else's business. Now, if somebody has money in an IRA, let's dive into the weeds a little bit without confusing everybody to death because you, you'll know more about this than I do. I know enough to be dangerous. That's about it. And that is, you know, you got to be really careful investing in your own in your own houses, right? There's there's a lot there's there's rules and regulations about that. <laughs> How yeah, does that you gotta work? you gotta make sure. So one of the reasons why IRAs have rules different than your personal money is because your IRA is better money than your personal money. And I'll I'll illustrate that quickly. Your personal money is taxed. So whatever you buy, so if Glenn and Amber buy a house today for a hundred grand and they sell it tomorrow for two hundred grand, they have a hundred thousand dollar capital gains that shows up on their tax return. So Uncle Sam doesn't really care what they did to get there because at the end of the day, they're going to get taxed on that profit. In an IRA, if they bought that same $100,000 house in their IRA and sold it the next day for 200, the 200 goes back into the IRA and there is no capital gain tax. And, and what makes that so special is because the IRA is either tax free or tax deferred. That's the beauty. And they could do that every single year for the next 20 years and never pay a penny of tax on all those capital gains. That's why there's some different rules between your IRA money and your personal money, because the IRS wants to make sure that that tax beneficial money isn't growing artificially. They want it to, they're comfortable with it growing. So they don't want you doing anything that, that would be any sort of non arms length deal, right? Any sort of sweetheart deal. So for example, they don't, they don't want Jason to use his IRA to buy a house that I already own today and I just simply sell it to my IRA at a steep discount, makes it more profitable when they sell it and I tuck all that profit tax-free into an IRA. The IRS says, we gotta fence this stuff around, right? So all deals in an IRA have to be arm's length. They've gotta be with unrelated third parties, no business relationship, and they've gotta be at a quote unquote fair market rate, right? That's what they want. Um, and it's because of that taxation. So they're easy rules to follow, but it frustrates a lot of investors because they want to get as much into their IRA as possible, but you got to do it the right way. That goes back to that hitting the gas pedal too hard. Uh, and while you can speed and sometimes there's no cops on the road, uh, there's plenty of times where you hit the gas and there's a cop sitting over the hill ready to pull you over. And you don't want to risk your IRA for the sake of a few extra bucks when they're already giving you 100% tax-free growth. That's awesome. You know, so this is a personal question. I bet, I wonder if your brain is doing the same thing. So I have never purchased a property inside. Of, I've always used self-directed IRAs for other people, from other people. Can you, so you're saying you can purchase a property in your own self-directed IRA. Is that true? That is correct. So and what if it's, can, a, go ahead. ahead. Oh, sorry. The, so the, the IRA is buying a property, just like an IRA buys a stock. You're just saying, I want to own one, two, three Main Street mm -hmm. instead of shares of Microsoft. So my question is, so we've been beefing up our Airbnb because we live in New York and New York, you don't have to pay rent here, apparently. That's just the new thing that the governor says. <laughs> so, so, but we are doing quite well on our Airbnb business. And so um, those are paid in advance. We like those. So could you, could we buy a house and put it in a self-directed IRA? Because doesn't that, won't that, won't that exceed some limits and that kind of stuff? Or how, how does that work? How, and then, so the, so the income has to stay in there though. A management fee can come out. If, if, if I'm correct, I mean, I guess I'm asking a question. I, this is what I think. Again, I'm dangerous. But if it, I think that imagine if you can come out to run it, but I think that you have to keep any profits inside the IRA that would that would come from that Airbnb. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And this is the beauty is it's that simple, right? Yeah, there's some nuances and we've got, you know, some boundaries, but your IRA today could go by, a, and, and I'll use Florida as an example, because this is something we do and something I actually do. I can go to the beach where everybody wants to be, especially those in New York. And I noticed the scarf hammer. It's uh, we don't wear scarves in, in Florida. 
Uh, we're not required to because the weather doesn't allow us to. And, and anyone that does is only doing it for show. Our goal is to live there within three years, just so we're, we're I, on that path. Just I don't so you think know. I, I'm, I'm from Texas originally, and I don't think I ever owned a scarf until I moved to New York. Yeah, not a much different climate. So we, we uh, but we're used to beachfront property has significant value in both appreciation. But what people are realizing is the short term rental market is incredible. And people don't want to travel from New York to come down to Florida for a week and stay in a hotel room. There's no couch. There's nowhere to sit. There's no fridge. So people are buying up these condos. And this is something, like I said, I've got personal experience with. So my IRA can go to the beach, right? I can go find a property, whatever it is. My IRA buys it. And then my IRA can, can put it on Airbnb or put it on uh, VRBO or any of the other outlets, right? I can go hire a management company to handle all of that for me if I choose. And all of those tenants that stay and all the rent that comes, comes into my IRA, 100% tax-free. And all of the expenses, so when a tenant breaks a vase, right? Um, any of those repairs all get paid out of the IRA. And what I've done is I've just changed my investment portfolio of my retirement account from stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, right? Which is kind of set it and forget it to something that's a little bit more active naturally, right? A lot more moving parts. But now my IRA is, is making money based on the success of that Airbnb. It's, it's incredible. Can, this is diving in some weeds, but other people may have the same question. You're buying a house and you don't have all the cash available because you're tied up with the things or you're, just, or you're just not that big. Can you finance inside of your stuff? Yeah. IRA? This is the other beauty. So let me start with what you can't do in the stock market. You cannot take your IRA and leverage it or get a mortgage or, or a loan to buy stocks. Nobody will loan you the money because the loan must be non-recourse, which means the only collateral the lender can take because it's an IRA is the asset. The lender can't get your personal guarantee because it's not your money, it's your IRAs. Well, in the stock market, this will tell you everything you need to know about stocks. No one will write you a loan to your IRA secured by stocks without a personal guarantee. Yet there's plenty of lenders that will write you a loan to your IRA secured by real estate. Now, if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about asset classes, banks aren't dumb. Banks make money by lending on good assets. So they won't do it in the stock market and they will do it in the real estate market. The term is a non-recourse loan. It means that the, the lender is only securing the loan by the, the asset, the property. There's no personal guarantee. So if your IRA buys an Airbnb with a non-recourse loan and, and you default, your IRA for whatever reason, it doesn't rent, et cetera, all that lender can do is take the property back. They cannot come after you personally because you don't own it, your IRA does. So it's even some built-in asset protection for you. So the, the lender probably wouldn't like that because they're going to want personal guarantee on a property, I'm guessing, unless you have a real high LTV or a real low LTV, rather. They're going to want an LTV of around 30, 40%. Okay. It's not absurd. It's not outrageous. And it's your IRA. Your IRA tends to already have some more cash than your personal money. Um, so if you wanted to buy a $200,000 condo, right? Typical rule of thumb is you probably want to have at least half the money in your IRA because- yep. They're not just going to take every red cent out of the IRA for the down payment. They want you to have some cash reserves and, you know, in, in case it doesn't rent in the first couple of months or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's a, it's an incredible tool and the non-recourse loan allows you to leverage your account. Um, now, if you leverage it in an IRA, there's a little tax that you're going to pay called UDFI. Um, but that's okay. You're borrowing money. So you're, you're getting a little tax. If you do it cash, there is no tax. Um, but you can eliminate the tax with a, a special account called a solo QRP, which is something that we can you know, take offline if anyone has questions about it. But, but the part I want to make sure that I drill home here is you can use leverage to take a $100,000 IRA and really have $200,000 of purchasing power. And that there's no more powerful way to make money. And yeah. you get to do it in this tax advantage vehicle, whereas in the stock market, a hundred thousand dollar IRA has a hundred thousand dollars worth of purchasing power. Awesome. Very interesting. Yeah, this is great info. I think yeah, probably people are sitting there going, "Wait a minute, what?" Their <laughs> minds are might be a little. We dove in the weeds a little bit deep there, but I think that's good because I think that you know, just remember the basics are is that if you have money sitting in an IRA or or a four hundred one k from someone you don't work for anymore, correct? Am I saying that right? Yeah. 
then yep. then there's a good chance you should be able to convert that to a self-directed IRA and either be a lender, get 8, 10, 12, 14%, a couple points, whatever you're doing for private lending, or you can figure out how to do your own deals in there as well, buy property or whatever it might be. So amazing. And then yep. grow that tax, tax-free tax for now. You still have to pay tax when you take it out at whatever, whatever rate you are then, or it's not like a Roth, right? It's not like a Roth IRA or is... That gets tricky, right? We we don't have to dive into those weeds unless you unless it's easy. <laughs> well, the, the the only thing I'll touch on there is is uh, the Roth IRA is completely tax free. You just pay the tax up front, and yeah. any growth is one hundred percent tax free. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's, is that possible with a self directed IRA? Yeah, you can self direct a Roth and never pay a penny of tax on any of your earnings. Okay. Interesting. And then when you and then when you take the well we won't, yeah we we could be in the weeds all day on that so yeah this is great stuff though Jason this is this is awesome to to speak to someone who's so I think what I like the most about this interview today is that not only are you very well versed in self directed IRAs but real estate specific you live our life yeah so you understand who we are you're not just here as a banker saying hey yeah you can use me that well no you do it so you understand you can and you can help. Any student that wants to reach out to you, you can help them get their account set up. You can help them do all this. Am I correct? Yeah. And I, and I appreciate that. We're like the, uh, for those that, that are old enough to remember the uh, hair club for men, right? <laughs> Not just the president. Uh, I'm also a client, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're here to help. I mean, the whole world of self-direction is not going to be solved in 30 minutes, uh, you know, in, in a podcast. And, and I appreciate what you guys do because you guys take your time and, and, and volunteer it to give people resources and, there's a lot of things that people just don't know. And the sooner that we learn more about those kind of things, we just haven't been fortunate enough to hear yet. Uh, the sooner that we can start grabbing these tools, put them in our toolbox and, and kind of get on our journey to building wealth. So I, I really, you know, certainly appreciate being here. And, and I love the discussion uh, with like-minded people. Tell, uh, tell our listeners how they can reach you. How can they, if they want to reach out and get an account or just have a conversation, how can they reach you? Uh, first thing to recommend is go to our website. It's newviewtrust.com with a U N U V I E W trust.com. Uh, you can email me directly at Jason at newviewtrust.com. If you want to schedule some time to chat, or you just have a quick question, uh, can I do this? Can I do that? What are the rules? Um, but, uh, but the website as well is full of content. There's a lot of videos and, and other things on there, uh, on a variety of different asset classes. I know we, we, uh, obviously this is a real estate, uh, you know, conversation, um, but there's a, a myriad of investments you can do in an IRA. And uh, we've got content all over the place to to help you learn and, and make an informed decision. I tell you, you know, I just just in speaking, you just for just for 30 minutes here and spending time with you, I can tell that you will probably take good care of your clients. I don't know, just a gut feel. I got a pretty strong gut. It's got me pretty far in life. I just have a feeling that you are good with that. Um, the reason I'm saying that is the companies we've used in the past, we didn't know you 13 years ago, but we, the companies we used to set up our, our other companies, they've, they've been bought a few times. And I used to have a personal connection to one company, some vice president I talked to. And that was what, when I did that work, now my team does it. But when I was doing it, I had that personal connection. I have a feeling that you probably treat people with that personal connection. Am I, am I throwing, am I correct? Am I way off base? Well, I think our clients would have to to validate that, but, uh, but I appreciate you saying that we, we do. I mean, that's a real differentiator for us. We're, we're a billion and a half dollars in size. We're a big company. We've been around almost 20 years, um, but we still pride ourselves on being kind of a small time, pick up the phone, talk to our customers. Uh, we know stuff they don't know, and, and it's not our job to make them feel like they don't know. It's our job to help them understand what they don't know. So we love what we do if, uh, if that doesn't shine through and, and, uh, and we try to hire people and bring people onto our team that have that same level of passion. I think being a real estate investor, I would recommend just, just in a short time of getting to know you, I think that I'd recommend anybody at least give you a call because you, you understand our world. You're not just pushing papers behind a desk, you know, and being the banker type. No offense. That's just, you know, you, okay. you understand our world or you're not, you're not, you, you, you know, real estate. Yeah. And fear is what holds a lot of people back in real estate. Oh. And, and whenever you're able to get education, and make you, you're just able to make a more informed decision. Yeah. And that is huge. And I think that that's something that you definitely would offer anybody that talks to you. So listen, so guys, um, just as a, as a wrap up here with Jason over at Newview Trust. So it's newviewtrust.com with a U, right? New, 
new with a U, viewtrust.com uh, or Jason at newviewtrust.com. And again, thanks for being here, man. This is great, great conversation today. We never know going into these, but it's going to be like, well, we've got a banker conversation today. What's it going to be like? You know, well, you, this has been great. You're an investor, plus you're in Florida, plus you've got that cool fish on the got, wall. And he's got a tan. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't even have sunshine. Let's not even talk to him about that. I'm, no, I don't like him anymore. I liked him at first. Now, right away, right away when you mentioned Florida and the tan and the short sleeve shirt, I don't like him anymore. So, well, like I tell everybody else, um, we, there's no barrier to entry to the state of Florida. So uh, at any time, if you want to be tanned almost year round, uh, we're always uh, we're always welcome to have you. So we're on our way. Yeah, we are. We are on our way. So we'll go. Well, listen, Jason, thanks so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. And uh, guys, give uh, give Jason a call and get your IRA moved over there and start doing some investing tax deferred and tax break. Glenn Amber, thanks for having me so much. I really appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, Jason. Guys, we'll see you on the next one.